Okay, so we're out for some Sunday fun day. After we went to church this morning, we decided we wanted to go to the date park. <laughs> That's all. Coleman Avenue is part of the way to get there, obviously. Right, and well, we have to use this GPS because you make me understand this place in a whole different way. The way you would normally go, the way we think we should go, we can't go because they're having a parade. Yes, and a parade and festival. I mean, I didn't even know that we were doing parades now, but apparently we are. And this is the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Waveland. And I mean, like every road is blocked. We keep going down a road and we think we can get through and we can't. And then we gotta change direction and go a different route. It was organized in 18... Mile, right oh, nope, Simple. it was not organized in 18... It was organized in 1964, and it's the oldest Irish parade on the Mississippi coast. I knew you'd be interested, so I'm sharing with you. So, um... They... The different Mardi Gras organizations that are out there, like the crew of Kinski, the, yeah, the, crew, is the, different the crew of Shamrockers, the Queens, and the Raw Oyster Marching Club, and get ready to catch beads, potatoes, carrots, and cabbage. I can't even imagine catching cabbage. I don't know, that sounds dangerous. Catch a potato? What well, if you're yeah. not paying attention and get a potato to the side of the head? Yeah, and it's totally free. Um, free concussions I don't know if potatoes. it's fortunately or unfortunately we're not gonna go to it because it actually has started and like we would have to park a couple miles away to even like get to it that's why it's so I don't know blocked off and crazy trying to get around but it's pretty cool we do have a few um, we did see some of the floats that were lined up and so we welcome to sunny Mississippi now the first for us this is our first State Park Campground Review. Is it? Yes, it is. Are you sure? This is okay. Yeah, it is because we didn't do a campground review of the other state park we were in. Okay. We've stayed in a state park, and we didn't make a review of it, but <laughs> we should have. We should have, <laughs> but here on the beautiful Mississippi Gulf Coast, we are at Buccaneer State Park, and before you get excited about. What you're seeing here on the right, we're not here to talk about those. Well, not yet. But yes, these campers right across the street from the Gulf of Mexico are part of this state park. Now, Buccaneer State Park is kind of unique in that this place is mostly a campground. I mean, They've got some other amenities here, like they have playgrounds, they have they have a nature trail, um, and they have disc golf here as well for the disc golf fans, and some other amenities we're gonna talk about as we get to them. The coolest amenities. Yeah, but this is mainly a campground. And as you can see by everything that's starting to scroll by now, it's um a lot. <laughs> Um, there are over 200 campsites in the state park itself. Mm -hmm. And oh, those um, those ones we just drove by right across the street from the Gulf, there's 70 of those. 70. That's seven zero if you're looking at it on their website on your phone. And one thing nice too about this state park, which you don't see in a lot of state parks, well at least in Florida you don't see it, is all of these sites are full hookup with the exception of the 70 that are right by the Gulf. Those are water and electric only. They do have a dump station. This is the, actually the entrance where you um, pay to get in. And right here to the left, right on the other side of the flags here, on the other side of that do not enter sign, is the dump station. So now we're just waiting to get the, to be allowed in. Again, they have bath laundry and shower facilities here and they're up high <laughs> that was the building on the right we just saw and there's another one coming up here 
We're going to go ahead and check out um, sites 26 through 47 for you real quick. There's a bathhouse right there. We'll show you that too in a little while. Everything's a one-way road um, once you get into the loops, which is nice. Most of these are um, well, like I call they call premium, and so they're concrete pads. Here's a Jayco Greyhawk. We used to have a Jayco Greyhawk. There's like a bunch of loops, but there's like three sections to the park, and each section seems to be just slightly different in what it looks like. Like this one has grills, but the other ones, they didn't, I don't know if they had grills or not, but they don't have the fire rings here. The grills that you cook on, they didn't have bear, bear grills. We didn't see bear grills anywhere here. Just oh, no, no, yeah, sorry. So again, state park here, the um, rates run anywhere from $28 for non-peak and peak season, oddly enough. It's $28 all the way it's across. It's $28, yeah. The whole year. Um, but the water and electric only sites that are right on the Gulf, those are $45 a night. So you actually pay, you know, a little bit of a premium. And a little bit of an inconvenience. Why aren't they the premium sites? Yeah. I, <laughs> huh? You pay a premium for the sites that aren't listed as premium. Premium. Yeah. <laughs> so they have premium campsites here and they have beach sites. Um, couldn't find a price online for the primitive camping. I would assume it's way cheaper than the 28 bucks. Mm -hmm. But the sites here, I'd say are kind of level kind of level i have as far as internets we have about two bars of at&t 4g and we have about mm, two bars of verizon so it's probably okay so here to the right here this big building if it was open would be the camp store um what else was in here is right here it is the uh, laundry activity building camp store and restrooms and they also have the um, the activity pool so I'm assuming maybe an activity pool if you can see it it's got let's see if I can turn around just a little bit here do you want to see the pool it's a pretty cool pool it's got like waterfalls coming down in it let's go let's go check out the pool and I think it's probably where they might have like aerobics or something that's what I think it was an activity so all right we'll wait for you here beautiful day in middle of March here this pool is not open yet it's open Memorial Day to Labor Day just like a lot of pools but we can still take a quick peek at it that sound you hear that rushing of water it's the waterfall let's take a closer look So you have beach chairs here for you, tables, which I assume also have um, umbrellas that they'll have on them because they do have the stands for the umbrellas, palm trees. It's not very deep, two feet six inches all the way around is what it looks like. So two feet six inches. So there's no obviously no diving board here, but hey, it's a nice refreshing pool. And if you don't like that, you're right across from the Gulf of Mexico. And well, that's as deep as you want to go. These sites, I guess, are still called premium sites, but they're not like the sites we just saw. All of these are on the grass. This Winnebago journey here is kind of odd because it's license plates from the US Virgin Islands. Man, that had to have been a heck of a drive. They had to hold their breath for a while. And these folks here, looks like they're either getting ready to leave or just showed up. You should just kindly go around them. Yep.
they're actually kind of roomy sites even here these are still full hookups but they're just on the grass i call it gravel because they do have some rocks ish <laughs> and these actually look to be more level than the regular ones so mm -hmm. go figure but again it's over 200 sites here so we're not going to show you all 200 sites obviously just the three areas so this may, is the may, second of maybe the in fast three. motion we'll see yeah so now we're going to go check out the primitive camping area so for those of you who brought a tent what's closed it says closed yeah it does well we're going to ride back here yeah the primitive camping area is closed but we'll check it out I don't know if it actually was closed or if it just is there and they moved that sign. Okay, so here's all the, you can see the different areas here where you can actually put a put your campsite. This one? Pull, yeah. Pull, <laughs> I yeah. don't know which way to go. <laughs> this is a fun campground review. I don't know where I'm going. I mean, there's still actual sites, like here's site six. So it's not just pitch your tent anywhere out here in the woods. So there's still actual sites. But one problem I see with these primitive camping sites, and I think Talon noticed it too, was, and you may have noticed it, and that is, there's a severe lack of bathroom anywhere nearby. <laughs> well, there's a severe lack of modern bathroom facilities nearby. There's plenty of bathroom area around here, if you got the courage for it or whatever, but Okay, here's site four, man. Site four is nice. Look at that. Oh, the trees. Wow. Um, now, way off in the distance, through those trees right there, and we're going to talk about it when we first pulled into the primitive camping area too, is the train tracks. And that is an active train track. So for those of you who saw our review of Cajun RV Park in Biloxi, we talked about the trains running all night, every night. Well, this is the track they run on. So... Um, you're going to be right up against it all the time. If you if you come if you come here and you're staying in these non-paved areas, you're going to be right against the track. Let's just go out the wrong way here, so we can show that again real quick. All right. Since this is closed, I don't think we're going to have to worry about anybody coming in. I actually don't think anybody's here, but it, you know what? I think what it is is their primitive camping. I bet it's probably open seasonal. the seasonal, yeah. just like the. Um, Yep. So, like so literally on the other side of this fence here on the right is the railroad track. And so, yeah, that's going to be noisy when those trains come rolling through here. Because I don't think there's any area around here for them to be going slow. Because we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So they probably come rolling through here at a good clip. At night. Yeah. So just something to keep in mind. We're gonna go check out and get an up close and personal look at one of the um, campsites here in just a second as well as we're driving through here. These folks here are tent camping on a full hookup spot. So yeah, you could tent camp in a full hookup spot you're just paying 28 bucks. But at least you got water and electric that you can use. I wouldn't recommend trying to use the sewer if you're in a full hookup using a tent, I mean, come on. <laughs> I guess you could. I mean, I mean that one's not too bad because you just walk across the parking lot and you're yeah. at the bathrooms. But and while they do look uneven, but I haven't seen tons of like extra levelers and things. And yeah, I've so. only seen a couple that had um like a lot of blocks underneath and so and and, and must not be thankfully hard. i haven't seen any uh, motor homes with their front wheels dangling in the air so that's that's always nice nice so, one to put a little bridge here so yeah people in this loop if you need to use a bathhouse you it's, got a place to walk across yep yeah. so who needs to go to the bathroom i need to go to the bathroom you want to go to the bathroom with me? I know that sounds weird. Let's go check out the bathroom. 
All right, this is the men's room, one of them. What is up, guys? Not very clean. Doesn't smell very good either. Pretty big shower stall for handicapped. Somebody who left all their clothes. I don't even know why there's toilet paper there. Another shower stall. And another shower stall. I don't know. We went to a couple other bathrooms and they were clean but didn't have the cameras, we didn't film it. You get what you get. It stinks in here. Back to the tour. Well, I hope you enjoyed the bathrooms. So we're gonna check this here loop out. I forgot the name of it because I wasn't paying attention when we drove through, but it's a loop. A loop, a loop, a loop, a doop. And what we're gonna do here is I wanna show you some of the unique features of the campsites here. So let me go show you something here. So again, like I said, all these sites have cement picnic table, water sewer hookups. But the sewer's kind of interesting. Here's the sewer hookup. So it's at an angle. Come around here to the side so you can actually see. It's at an angle. So you gotta do some creative connecting there. You're obviously not gonna use a 90 degree elbow plug in there. This panel's about to fall off. Thirty, fifty, twenty amp. There's your water hookup, and there's the not, not level at all site, which all these aren't. Okay, a couple more things to show you real quick. This is, I think, kind of the gem of this particular campground. So let's go check it out. All right, so now we're making the big left turn. And we're gonna go check out these golf side. They're not ocean side because we're not on the ocean. These golf front parking spots. Now these are these are some of the slots right there too. I think, aren't they? They certainly look like it because there are hookups here, but there's nobody using them. I mean, this RV is just sitting there. But yeah, there's a whole lot of hookups. Get the hookup. Yeah, it's pulling there. What is this? So, <laughs> one of the big features of this place is this guy right here. The wave pool. Well, that's a water slide. Water slide, yeah. Water slide, duh. Yeah. Wave pool's over here. The wave here. pool's over here. We're not going to be able to get too close to look at either one of these because they are closed currently. So, they don't open until Memorial Day. Yeah, and this parking lot here is for people who are just coming to, to use that as... Yeah. Um, to come to swim yeah that way they don't have to go through the park entrance and pay the fees and all that good stuff but i read that this is like the only one wave pool in a state park and it was built in 1980 and so it, it's really cool yep Very cool place. so now it's time to check out these golf side spots i don't know that there's a bad view over here no, there really isn't. I mean, you might have a camper or two in your way if you're not on the very front row. These but. campers, these sites are a little tighter, which that's just kind of how it goes with um, these, you know, anything that's like waterfront. They always pack them in more so you can get more. But, I mean, here's the view. There is no beach here. None. Well, uh, well the tiny bit right up here you're going to see. It's yeah. a little jetty. So really right on the other side of the road there, is the water that that's that's a jetty wall holding back the water if you're going to go to the beach you're going to be there with other people too as we noticed there were several people that went out and sat on the beach so i mean yep but there's enough room for you know i mean i suspect in the summer it's a lot busier though yep and there's a casino 
right down the street. We're looking at it right now. Way off in the distance. It's not that far away. Now, these are back in sight. So yep. I'm just going to say, for us, that's not a benefit mm -mm. because we we would be backing in and we have no view out of the well, back of the Well, I'll be honest with you. In our Class A RV, we would probably just pull in since it's only um, water and electric. we just pull in and run our connections to the other side. I, I mean, that's just what I'd do. That way, you get that big window on the front of that Class A out looking over the Gulf. Um, yeah, we can deal with the... Uh, with the water hose and the electric hose um, being on the yep. being on the living side of the RV mm -hmm. but I would say this is definitely a must go to stop if you mm -hmm. want some privacy because you're you are kind of away from it all out here um, you're about 10 or 15 minutes from Waveland itself and Waveland is a tiny town so you're not you're not around a bunch of hustle and bustle and you're right on the Gulf and you can just drive a little bit down either way to get to the beach and i imagine and it's probably not really crowded so we'd love to hear your feedback on if this is a nice place to stay or not what's the good what's the bad we want to hear some firsthand you know real life experiences uh, if you've got some other favorite state or national parks that you've been to that are right on the water whether that be the ocean or the gulf or a large large lake no small lakes. We'd love to hear about that as well, too. And if you have any questions about Buccaneer State Park or the area, drop a note in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you, and we'll do our best to get them answered. Now we're going to go to the casino. As always, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate it. And if you're not a subscriber already, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that notification bell so you get notifications whenever we have more campground reviews or just some of our out and about and what we see in the area and product reviews. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, make your next journey an epic adventure. Epic. Bye.